Please note that this content is for adults only. Viewer discretion advised. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe, like and share. and welcome to another live stream with me, Gisela Kay. This is Grizzly True Crime and welcome to all the locals in Houston as well. This is a story out of Houston, Texas. Buckle up. It's quite a crazy story and a little bit confusing. I've been trying to hunt down the probable cause affidavit today, but it's not available yet. Also, to all the new subscribers, welcome to you. Thank you for subscribing. We've just hit a brand new milestone. Now we've got 253,000 Grizzlies as part of this community. <laughs> so I hope that you'll enjoy your time here with us. I hope you'll stay a long time. If you haven't yet, please like and share the video so that others can also learn about this information. And hopefully the police will be able to find the victim. That's a big concern of mine. I hope they find her. I hope if there were any other victims that they'll be able to come forward, you know, to uh, say maybe what they experienced. Allegedly, okay. So we're gonna. I'm gonna. I don't have a presentation for you today because I really wanted the probable cause affidavit and summarizing what we already have won't help. We need to read every little bit of detail that we have, okay. Also, uh, we're gonna have a member stream right after this. It'll teleport you there. So if you are a member, you could join us over there if you want to. If you've got some time, right after the stream, okay. All right. So let's. Uh, yeah, let's have a look. Alexander says, holy moly, five years. I know, right? So welcome to all my moderators. Thank you for everything you do and welcome to everyone. All right. So man accused, that's the headline. Uh, whoa. A man, man accused of kidnapping woman holding her against her will for four to five years at Southeast Houston home. Thank you so much to the person who sent this to me. Told you, keep all my sources anonymous. Uh, one of the Grizzlies sent this to me today. And I really, really appreciate it. When I saw it um, this morning, I'm like, what? <laughs> and then even though you guys are like, why aren't you resting? I rested. But then I started going down this rabbit hole and I'm like, we have to talk about it, okay? So now, let's, this, is the, this is the guy. He is a rapper from Houston, Texas. He's got about, I think it was 73,000 subscribers on YouTube. All right. And so some, some fans I've seen on Reddit are very, very upset and they don't think this is real. They don't think it actually happened. But I mean, whoa, to be arrested and charged the way he has and the timeline of it all, it's pretty interesting. So he is innocent until proven guilty. We do not know that he's done anything. We're just going to have a look at what they break down here from allegedly the probable cause affidavit. I just wish that mainstream media <laughs> would link the probable cause affidavit so we could read it because we love documents. Why must it be such a such a search? Just put it out there <laughs> for the public to see. It's just a document at the end of the day, but my word, okay. Can be quite a challenge sometimes to to find, right? Okay. Um Lewis, yeah. <laughs> that that's one of what Lewis is saying there, which yeah, please try to censor that <laughs> over here. Um, also, so we can play along with YouTube's rules, okay, so that they don't completely suppress the reach of the stream and then no one will hear about this information. But yeah, that was one of his album names. Now, Houston, a man has been arrested and accused of kidnapping a woman and holding her against her will at a Southeast Houston home uh, for several years. Lee Carter, 52, I see some of his fans only just found out his name is Lee Carter. Okay, they knew him as Viper. <laughs> Viper, okay. Lee Carter, 52, is charged with aggravated kidnapping. He was arrested on Thursday, which I looked at was January 4th. So it's very recent, okay? He was just arrested now, last week Thursday. So he's not having a good New Year. Mm -mm. Happy New Year. Okay, now you're in jail. <laughs> um, he's in the Harris County Jail with his bond set at $100,000, which is obviously not very high in my opinion, right? Because he's got to pay about 10%, so I'm pretty sure he could bond out. So they've already set bond conditions, of course, in case he does bond out. And so that's where he's at. They said, despite getting out of the situation back in April. 
And by the way, for those asking, this is a brand new case. This He was just arrested right now, January 4th of 2024. Now, they said despite getting out of the situation back in April, on Friday, Houston police were back at the home investigating a tip that the woman might still be there. Police performed a welfare check at the home along Perry Street. So this happened on Perry Street, not Perry Road, because trust me, I drove the entire Perry Road in uh, Houston, Texas, looking for this home <laughs> to see what it looks like from the outside. Um, and, and it's not Perry Road, it's Perry Street. All right. Hope I saved somebody some time there. Now, it's so interesting because what exactly led to him being arrested and charged with kidnapping, unless it's, you know, based on what they saw at the house. But I wonder what exactly they have on him and where is the victim? Okay. Thank you, Gail. Now, look here. They say the investigation. They made the arrest for the outstanding aggravated kidnapping warrant. So they say for the outstanding aggravated kidnapping warrant. So I guess they've been working on this case since April of 2023. He's only just been arrested, said Michael Collins, commander with the Houston Police Department. If you guys are new here and you're like, what kind of accent is that? <laughs> I'm South African. Okay. I live in Europe now in the Netherlands with uh, my husband, who is Swiss. And so that's why I say commander. <laughs> you might be used to commander. Okay with the Houston Police Department. The concern is that we possibly had an individual located inside this residence, um, perhaps locked, perhaps locked inside one of the interior rooms. That is so vague, but so concerning, okay? The initial incident happened in April of 2023. According to court documents, officers responded on April 7th of 2023 to a home located in the 5200 block of Perry Street in Southeast Houston for a kidnapping in progress. When they arrived, they heard a woman's voice coming from a window of the home. Officers began to speak to the woman who told them about four or five years before she was pregnant and panhandling off Almeida, Genoa. At that time, the suspect identified as Lee Carter pulled over to give the woman a dollar. Wow. <laughs> wow to that and wow to... <laughs> Uh, clear little newbies in chat who don't know how we roll around here. We're a pretty uh, nice bunch, kind, sensitive. We handle cases with respect. So please try to do that in the chat, okay? Um, so thank you, Mars. <laughs> All right. If you haven't yet subscribed, though, do that. Become part of us and you'll get the vibe eventually. Now they say, so from April of 2023. Wow. Okay. So now according to court documents, I wish right there. You see how they link Houston? That's like a, it's like a false lead. You know what I mean? Like, cause come on, link the court document. I want that. I want that. If you guys find it, send it to me. Okay. According to court documents, officers responded on April 7th of 2023 to a home located in the 5200 block of Perry street in Southeast Houston for a kidnapping in progress. But we just heard about the four and a half years. That's why I'm saying it again. Look, look, that was then they said there's a kidnapping in progress. Officers spoke to a woman who told them about four or five years before she was pregnant panhandling off Almeida Genoa, at that time the suspect identified as Lee Carter, pulled over to give the woman a dollar. The court document said Carter asked the woman if she needed help. The woman said she needed help and Carter said he would help her and he told her to get in his car. The woman got in his car and he drove to his home on Perry Street where the woman said she'd been hold he had been holding her against her will for the past four to five years. Thank you. Yeah, the purple one says panhandling is begging on the streets. Yes. All right. So the document said that the woman told police that Lee Carter, Viper, the rapper, repeatedly forced her to have sex with him, forced her to take drugs, and prevented her from leaving the house by locking her inside a garage. We've seen many kidnapping cases like that, right? Or abduction cases. The woman says she did not have a shower in the garage, so from time to time, Carter would allow her to leave the room to take a shower. The woman said she never saw anyone else in the home while she was kept there, but could hear Carter arguing with other women while she showered. She said on numerous occasions, when Carter would take her from the garage to the home, she attempted to run away and escape. So many times she said she tried to escape. Each time, Carter would run after her, grab her and return her to the garage and lock her inside again. Shame. And I mean, if he was forcefully, of course, as well, 
starving her, drugging her. She must have obviously also been in a very weak state trying to get away but couldn't. Now the biggest shock to me is that they don't know where this victim is right now. That's what the police are saying. Uh, very worried about that. AC also says, when did she give birth? Yeah, the police also say they don't know if she gave birth, when she gave birth, or what happened to the baby. Oh dear. Okay, so they said the woman said she pled with Carter to let her go almost daily, but she was threatened with physical violence. She said when she begged him to let her leave, Carter would force her to take pills along with crack cocaine. Shame, you two doesn't like those words. And other illegal drugs causing her to become physically unable to leave. Which is what I was saying, right? Just numbing her, weakening her. She said that she told Carter on numerous occasions that she didn't want to take the drugs, but he continued to force her to take them. The documents said the woman told police that Carter provided her with chips and snacks for food. So I think that, do you think it's chips like fries or like crisps? Okay, but anyway, either way, <laughs> I've just seen different reports. I'm like, which one is it? Okay, chips and snacks for food, but she was hardly able to get a full meal. When she spoke to police, the woman said she had not showered in almost two months. She said that he was able, she was able to text police. That was in April, okay, of 2023. She was able to text police because Carter allowed her to use his laptop, where she then used a text now application to contact 911 dispatch and tell them that she's being held against her will. The woman said that she had been able to escape once before, but she ended up in the hospital and Carter came and picked her up and locked her in the garage again. Oh no. Like she actually managed to escape before, ended up in the hospital, maybe she passed out, you know, on the side of the road, or I'm sure she was very weak, you know, and taken to the hospital and there he arrived and picked her up and locked her up in the garage again. He then put up boards on the exterior of the garage window to prevent her from escaping again. Oh man, isn't it so hectic? We've got to just take it one step at a time here. I just think this is really terrible. Let me just change my lighting a little bit so that you could see me a little bit better. Okay, so Shaman. She tried to escape and begged him to let her go every day. The document said there was a makeshift toilet inside of the garage that did not flush, a sink with a faucet and dripping spigot, a mattress covered with vomit, assorted chips, and a few Twinkies. The document said that officers said the victim was extremely malnourished and weighing approximately 70 pounds only with a pungent stench let me just convert that for us here for us who use uh the metric system 31 oh 31.75 kilograms oh wow java jill says lurker time flies eh? yeah <laughs> thank you for coming out of lurker mode there for a second and for your support if you are lurking by the way that means you just you know you're watching you never chat come say hi we're a nice bunch Okay, so again, the document said, officer said that the victim was extremely malnourished, weighing approximately 70 pounds, 31.7 kilograms, with a pungent stench. Her clothes were very dirty and she had no shoes. A neighbor told police that they actually, that they never actually saw anything going on at the home. But from conversations with Carter, they believed there may have been illegal activity happening in the house. They were actually at my door talking to me when a gal came clawing out of that window that you see barricaded up, said Jediah Bates. Bates? Jediah Bates. The neighbor told police that they believed there may have been human trafficking or that uh, porn may have been made with the woman at the home. Sexual abuse material, more like it, okay. All of it gave me a red flag. Bates said everything from day one was a red flag he didn't do anything that wasn't a red flag at one point Carter told Bates about the woman who he kept inside the home he just kind of explained that um, he had some girls that were in there and he never used the word locked up but um he was kind of protecting them from themselves he said oh no 
it's typical. We see this in many, many kidnapping and abduction cases where they pretend to be so helpful. It's like, I'm just helping her. We just saw a recent one. I think it's in my video section. Remember that teenager that was found um, under that trap door? And that was that guy, a 34 or something, 34 year old man. Remember that one? If you didn't see it, go check it out. But there as well, he's like, I was just helping her. Yeah, okay. Now, this one is also saying, apparently, he's saying he was kind of protecting them from themselves. From the sounds of things, she would call him his boyfriend. Her, her boyfriend. So, I mean, it was kind of a mutual weirdness, I guess. Yeah, that's kind of how abusive, scary, life-threatening situations go. I don't think it was um, a boyfriend, in my opinion, from what I'm hearing. And the condition that she was in, in April. Now, the arrest. This is on Thursday, which that's recent. So that happened in April of 2023. And now on January 4th of 2024, there was an arrest. Uh, the Houston Police Department arrested him. So from April, May, June, July, August, September, October, nine months later? What? Were they investigating for nine months or did they find something? What led them there? They did say another welfare check. They thought maybe she was still there. But now they can't find her. That is, yes, <laughs> Stefan says, oh, the trapdoor under the rug. Remember that case? I mean, then we saw a follow-up there and the guy just said, I was just trying to help her, okay? Hope and Fear says, I can't imagine 45 years abused day in and day out, right? Absolutely terrible. And Jennifer C said, I'm usually a lurker, but love it when you get snarky. <laughs> All right, you might like our member streams then if you do want to become one. We get snarky over there. <laughs> okay, so... He was booked into the Harris County Jail, where he's facing a charge of aggravated kidnapping. The judge said he's bail at $100,000 and he's ordered not to have contact with the victim. Among several conditions of release, if Carter bails out, he will be required to wear an ankle monitor. Yeah, Joanna says 100000 bond is way too little. I think so too. I think that is very risky. And even if he's required to wear an ankle monitor and not contact the victim... Is he going to comply with that? Is he a flight risk? Is he going to leave? I don't know. And I'm sure he's got lots of connections because he's a fairly well-known rapper. Apparently. <laughs> okay. I've never heard of him before, though. Um, so they said a public defender told the judge that Carter has lived in Houston his entire life and is employed as a real estate broker. Okay. Additionally, the public defender said that Carter has seven children ranging from 1 to 31 years old. Where is the victim? After hours of knocking on Carter's front door, asking if anyone was inside, police officers made forcible entry to the home. Due to the very serious nature of the warrant and aggravated kidnapping, we had exigent, ex exigent circumstances to make entry, Collins said. We would not have entered a residence without a warrant unless we had serious concerns about somebody's safety. And again, due to that, the nature and severity of the allegations in that incident report and the complainant's statements. Inside, they found only a TV playing and a dog, and that dog was rescued by Bark, which I assume would be a animal rescue shelter. The woman caught is accused of holding captive, sexually abusing and forced to take drugs was nowhere to be found. Houston police tell KPRC2 that they do not have other leads to follow, but are also not able to release any additional information. Isn't that so scary? Like, where is the victim? Did she ever have a baby? Of the seven children? Or any of those children? This victims? You know, did she have the baby? Quite something, right? Okay. <laughs> D Bank says, yeah, lurkers, come out of the bear den for some sunshine. Yes. Yeah, Joe Mars says, rapper or real estate broker? Same thing. And apparently, I think it's this one where his attorney said, sorry, wait, now we've got to resize again. Uh, let's just see where they said it. Yeah, I think it was here. Let's, let's just see this one. There, there's one where his attorney actually says that he was getting his like business degree or something. Like this guy. <laughs> All right, yeah, Viper. <laughs> so 
So let's just quickly go through this one as well. So that was the first one. That's the most comprehensive one I've found. And let's just see if there's any other, um, you know, details here where they said a local Houston rapper was arrested on Thursday after being accused of holding a pregnant woman against her will for years inside a Southeast Houston home. According to the police, the allegations include kidnapping and sexual assault. After our ABC 13 news team called the Houston Police Department, officers broke through a window on Friday evening and opened a door to gain entry inside the home. Officials said they were concerned because they hadn't heard from the victim. We found a dog inside, feces on the floor, and an empty room with a TV on, explained HPD Commander Michael Collins. Yes, a sunflower day says, wasn't she pregnant already when she was panhandling? Yep. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I wonder if she ever... Um, had that baby and also wonder if she got pregnant again and if so what happened to that child wow so the home on perry street in northeast houston had a boarded up window which of course is a red flag right at one point maybe a year ago, given the situation at one point maybe a year ago the cops uh come banging on my door claiming somebody had called from inside the house and was kidnapped or not able to leave on her own that's what the neighbor said right then as the cops were standing at my door a girl comes crawling out that window just there, just clawing her way out, pregnant, eight months. Now, when was that? When exactly was that? But is this in April? Because they said the cops here. At one point, maybe a year ago. You see, then that would be maybe a year ago, like April when the police were there. Okay. <laughs> so, and then they say a gal comes crawling out that window just there, just clawing her way out, pregnant, eight months. The man who reportedly owns the house, 52-year-old Dee Carter, was arrested at a nearby motel on Thursday. Now, what was he doing there? He wasn't even home. He's currently in jail. The accusations against him are so concerning that a judge cleared the room before reading aloud court documents and setting his bond at $100,000. Now... What does that mean? I think there's so much more to the story that they're obviously not telling us, probably for the purpose of the investigation. Carter is accused of picking up a pregnant woman while she was panhandling in South Houston and then bringing her to his house. The woman told police that Carter locked her up, essayed her, forced her to take drugs, including crack cocaine, for years. Court documents don't show if she ever gave birth, and if she did, what happened to the baby? Neighbors told ABC 13 that they would see her sometimes. He would back his car up to the shop, load her up, back up to the door at the front of the house so she could bathe, Bates said. Houston police confirmed they received eight calls for service to the house in the past year. Oh my word. Eight calls for service to the house in the past year. So it seems like if she was panhandling four to five years ago and was pregnant, and I think I read somewhere there she was about three months pregnant, right? What happened to that child? Did she ever give birth to that child? Where is the where is the child? But then, about a year ago, somebody saw her, a neighbor, eight months pregnant? Unless there's more than one victim, but the police at this stage are saying they don't think that there's more than one. Oh, man. All right. So, now you can see the rabbit hole I was in, right? The woman reported the, that officers took her to the hospital that officers took her to the hospital multiple times but she told police the suspect would always later pick her up and bring her back to the home interesting in april firefighters said that they opened the door and found a plastic door lock a broken toilet a dirty mattress a television food clothes and diapers and diapers the woman officials said only weighed about 70 pounds the suspect is a real estate broker whose attorney said that he's actually in the process of obtaining his master's in, bu in business administration. Right. As the investigation continued, it was discovered that the suspect is a popular Houston rapper who goes by the stage name Viper. It's just a creepy situation. We have no idea what's really going on. Bates said, you can't write this stuff. It's strange to see with your own eyes. It makes me sick as a human being and... I could tell you, as a police department, we are here for the citizens of Houston, we are here for this community, and we are here to make sure that this individual and her family get justice. Commander Collins said, the woman's whereabouts remain unknown, according to the Houston police. Eight calls? Sometimes the police took her to the hospital, but then he would just pick her up again? Like, what is going on here? Yeah, <laughs> Heidi said, what is going on? I just sat down to eat lunch and I know this case is very hectic and 
We're just talking about it for the first time now. I'm hoping at some point we can see the probable cause affidavit and I don't know if it's going to make more sense. I don't, I think this is pretty much all the information we have right now, but I really hope that they find her. So here, who is Viper? This is a, like a document that I found. <laughs> they said, uh, Viper, real name Lee Carter, is an American rapper born in El Dorado, Arkansas on October 7th of 1971. He learned to play the piano at age five and shortly moved to Houston, Texas afterward, where he has remained for the rest of his life. He started his rap career in 2004 with the release of Hustling Thick, <laughs> although he had tried rapping before under different names such as Lee Dog and J-Ride, both of which are shouted out on Hustling Thick. Viper is known for making an insane amount of home-produced albums such as, and that's why people are typing that in chat, you, you all cowards don't even smoke that. <laughs> Also, Kill Yourself, my, my Man, The Hiram, Clark Hustler, all of these. The cops are jealous losers. All right. Okay, let's not wait. They put a phone number here, so I'm not going to go further down. They say, how do I contact him? They, can, they, oh, they show about his, uh, his tweets and things like that, <laughs> which is quite odd. I just really want to see something because I read something about this that this this phrase that he uses here so just hold on one second i just want to take this off quick just i don't want to show his phone number and email address and stuff like that wait we're looking they're just showing the albums hustling thick ready and willing and all these ones i'll show you his youtube channel as well if you want to see it <laughs> nope okay yeah yeah here i think it's here um okay does he do live shows? He's done a few live shows in the past. They've all been in Texas. What the F are those bags he's trying to sell on his Twitter? They're real, which means at least one sucker actually ordered one. They are literally regular bags with the album cover printed on paper and glued onto the bag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he, he glues the, the album cover onto the bag. What's happened to Viper crack posting? The head admin locked the page, so that's not that. But here, what is this THOD? It stands for the Hornus of death. <laughs> Viper's mystical way of describing a tummy tuck belt and is Viper's own way to make him repent for his past sins. Viper thinks by wearing several of these at a time throughout daily life, he can transcend his evils and achieve all of his goals sin-free. This has actually put him in the hospital and he was treated for pneumonia in 2016. Okay. <laughs> I'm just like trying to, you see the rabbit hole I've been down. I'm just like, wait, what? So he believes he's, he's like Christ reincarnated. I've read elsewhere. He's believing that he wears this tummy tuck belt and that helps him do all these things. I don't know. It's just, it's quite a lot, right? <laughs> okay. A life journey, life plateau, life task means the current state vipers on, AKA the amount of thoughts he's currently wearing. He tweets usually beginning with all of this. It's all a lot. It's a lot to decode over here. <laughs> you guys are like, wow, I have no words. The end of the Thod saga is when Life Task 5 ends. Viper will be finished with this Thod. Warren believes he can spend the rest of his days in glory time. If Viper takes the Thod off, life journey resets and he has to do the entire process again. This is the full timeline of his Thod saga. So there's pictures of him here. Very odd stuff, right? Very odd things going on here. <laughs> So here's a whole timeline. I can link this for you if you want to go down this rabbit hole. I'm just showing you that it's a little bit of a, it's, it's, I mean, just a little bit, hey, just a mental health concern and very radical beliefs. And I mean, he's inflicting pain on himself as well and making himself sick. And then he's kidnapping people allegedly. I mean, wow. <laughs> Dolores says, is this dude on hardcore substances or something? This is crazy talk. I, I think he, he may be. Oh my word, Shauna says it's my one year Grizzly anniversary. Gizla and the Grizzlies are the best. Happy one year grizzly anniversary to you, Shauna. Okay, so I I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna put this link in the description box in case you wanna go down the rabbit hole that I went down today. Have fun. <laughs> I hope you make it out. You better. Okay. Okay, this one we've been over. He's accused of picking up a pregnant woman while she was panhandling, and that was forty five years ago. My word. Okay. The woman told police that Carter locked her up, essayed her, forced her to take drugs, including 
crack cocaine for years. Wow. Okay. Here is a picture of him. We've got mugshot time now. We do like mugshot time when we get to see some of the mugshots of like, okay, who are they? Where are they? What do they look like? Now? What do they look like now, right? Caroline says, assuming these few paragraphs describe his mentality, he's dealing with mental health defects, it seems. Quite something, right? Yeah. Helena says, slate up and hoi die sleutels weg. Which means lock, it, lock him up and throw away the key. I'll show you I'll show you his channel a little bit. I don't think I could play it because, you know, YouTube's very sensitive with uh, music, of course. We don't want them to shut the stream down or something. Um, Woody, thank you so much. So this, yeah, mugshot time for you guys. Houston rapper Viper, given name Lee Carter, was arrested by Houston police Thursday. Now stands charged with aggravated kidnapping after allegedly holding a woman captive in his South Houston home. So this is, again, going over the court documents. I'll link all these sources in case you also want to read it. This will be now a repeat of the information, so I'm not going to read it again. But it's just so shocking to think that the victim said that she was uh, captured four to, four to five years ago. That's a long time. Four to five years ago. It says the woman told the officer that she was in need at the time, that she was approached by Carter, who told her to get in his car because, you know, he was going to help. So, I've said that before. If you're ever in a vulnerable situation, you got to be even more vigilant of for your safety because the help that comes along is sometimes actually pretty damn sinister, unfortunately. You know, predators, serial killers, all kinds uh, target vulnerable people oftentimes, right? Not always, but a lot of the time. So just be very, very careful, right? All right, so... <laughs> Following what followed from there is a laundry list of alleged horrors. So I'm just going to read a little bit. According to the court documents, the woman told police that Carter kept her locked up in an attached garage at his property against her will for years, feeding her drugs, including all those other ones, and chips while sexually assaulting her repeatedly and depriving her of a working bathroom and shower. He'd occasionally let him into the home to bathe, but then she returned to a confinement in the garage. On one occasion, the woman was able to break through the garage window crawl out of the structure, which is what the neighbor saw then, okay, only to be taken to the hospital by police and released back to Carter. It, it sounds to me, and I don't want to assume, I don't know what they've been doing, but did the police fail this lady? Because it sounds to me like they may have, like, did they not read the room? <laughs> read the room, guys. Read the room, right? It just sounds very hectic. Maybe they had no reason at the time to arrest her, but it sounds pretty scary. Sweet dreams. Thank you so much. Gaynor says, I'm praying she's safe, uh, somewhere safe and totally hiding from everyone here. Me too. I just, I hope that she sees that, you know, the police are looking for her. She at some stage said that she um, wants a protective order against him, which I would, I, I can only assume that would have been in April, which is the time that they actually spoke to her. So what happened in between then? What happened? When? When did she go missing? Yeah. <laughs> Jen Rand says, heck yes, they failed. All right, so we've got that. Now here on this Reddit group, which take with a grain of salt, all right, it says, I just want to quickly zoom in here so we can actually focus on it. Look at it. I'll do it like this. Okay, so it says, I hope everyone here, so again, Reddit, okay? Grain of salt. Hope everyone here is aware of the fact that Viper has been documented trying to lure a woman in by bringing them over to Houston, making them take some real estate course. And, and we remember, he's a realtor, he's a real estate agent, and he's studying to get his business administration degree. Uh, okay. Um, so they say, by bringing women, making them take some real estate course, and then filing for the rebate credit himself. The guy has never had a job, tried selling people shares of a moving company that moves for free. Okay, has gipped people hundreds of times who have tried to buy his merchandise by just never delivering and so much more. Ooh, that's scary, right? Yeah, Kathleen said, this guy sounds like another Ariel Castro. Do you guys remember that case as well? Between 2002 and 2004, Ariel Castro abducted Michelle Knight, Amanda Berry, and Gina DeJesus. 
from the streets of Cleveland, Ohio, and later held him captive in his home in uh, tra in the Tremont neighborhood. Remember that one? This guy, <laughs> he's sounding very, very scary to me. Okay, now let's go here. Map time. <laughs> we do a little map time. Right? You want to hear the map time song? <laughs> There's not much to show. I could just show, I've actually, I did drive up and down the right street. So I could show you what it looks like from the front. There are pictures out there. Some people have made memes out of the front of his house. His own fans have doxed him, it seems, because they made an album cover of his house with an arrow and joking about all the titles that he makes on his rap songs and things and saying, you know, like, y'all didn't even know that you don't even kidnap people and hide them in your garage and all kinds of things. I, I don't think this is the situation for memes right now, but I do I understand why they did it. Okay, let's, uh, let's hear the map time song. We are back. Stefan, are you telling them? <laughs> Buckle up, everybody. Um, <laughs> I'm on the ground now. We've got the Google man, and off we go. So apparently, apparently, this is the house. This is the one that's shared everywhere on the news as well. News outlets were there outside this door. So let me just drive here a little bit on Perry Street. As I say, it's not Perry Road. And this is it. This is the house, and this is the garage area where he apparently had kept kept her. And the police say at this stage they do not think that there's any other victims. I'm going to say respectfully read the room, please. <laughs> read the room. I think there's more victims. I mean, one of the neighbors said that he thought that he was human trafficking and all sorts of things here. What's going on in this house? Oh, I'm sure they're investigating big time, especially now. Especially now that he's in jail. Maybe now the investigation only really begins. Maybe they were waiting this whole time to have something to arrest him for. Maybe he did it again. But where is the victim who was here, who tried to crawl out and all of that? So I think, is this what's boarded up? I don't even know where exactly it's boarded up or what, but this is the home. All right. In Houston, Texas. So that's the map time I can show you. <laughs> I'm like, and map time's over. Very quick map time. I'll zoom out a little bit so that you can actually see the area. So they did say on the south, the south side of Houston. Here's Houston. So southeastward here. Houston, Texas. Where I don't think that they live stream trials, right? They don't normally have cameras in the courtroom and things. So I don't know if we'll be able to watch that. But I'm going to keep an eye on this case because it's very concerning. <laughs> yeah, Gloria, right? So now, let me show you this. This is from Grizzy's Hood News. And you know, <laughs> there's been a few cases that Grizzy and I cover at the same time, and people actually think that I'm Grizzy sometimes. <laughs> people are like, is that you? I'm like, that's not me. But Grizzy is the only one with this video footage that I found. There wasn't, what I can see, it doesn't look like there was an official press conference. Uh, maybe I'll have to boost this, actually. Probably. Um, but the police spoke to media at that time. Okay. Let's do it like this. And so I think that's also where all these article sources are coming from. I don't know if they have the probable cause affidavit. But let's listen to this just a little bit here. Okay. So it's like sort of press conference. <laughs> Thank you to Grizzy's Hood News. So we were also concerned about the condition of the dog. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the dog had food and water as well. How was the dog? I'm sorry, so How was the dog? Uh, the dog? The dog was in good condition. Um, Bark took custody of the dog in good condition. So, um, you know, that, that, that's, that's obviously a very positive you know, outcome of this. Can you give us anything on the time frame from April to now and why it took so long to get the suspect? Right. I really can't. That's going to be part of the investigation. I wish I had a little bit more insight into that. You know, the way these, these often work is, is uh, patrol generates the initial report, which in this case, that's exactly what happened. At the time of the initial offense in April, the suspect was, of course, not at the location, so we obtained all the information. Um, 
generate the control, we assigned the control officer generator the report, and then that went to an investigating division. I can tell you that our Southeast Division Crime Suppression Team actively follows up and works routinely with our investigative divisions on cases, and in this particular instance, um, that worked with the concerned division and was able to locate the suspect yesterday. So was it the accusations from that document that from back in April that made it so serious for you guys wanting to break into there today? Correct. Yes. Um, due to due to due to the uh, to the nature <clears throat> of the offense, um, we were very concerned that there could have been somebody in there that needed immediate assistance. We would not have entered a residence without a warrant uh, unless we had serious concerns about somebody's safety. And again, due to that nature and the severity of um, the allegations in that incident report and uh, the complaint statement, we felt that we had no other choice. And we felt that any, I'm sorry, any unnecessary delay uh, could jeopardize our safety. Does it sound like trafficking? I hate to speculate. goodness there's uh, closed captions on Grizzy's hood news um, video here because there's always a train <laughs> a plane a truck or something making noise at these you know press it's not an official press conference from what I can gather because I looked everywhere for it if you find an official press conference please send it to me I could not find one from the Houston police I think the police were just talking to the media who were gathering outside to see what the heck was going on at this house but thank goodness for closed captioning, right? I would probably like you to follow up with the investigator at a later time once we have a little bit clearer picture of what happened. But we, but, but again, nobody was in the residence, so we are still searching for, for, for this complainant. Um, we have several additional leads that, that I really can't divulge right now that we're going to follow up on. To that, was my, that was my question, the complainant, the victim. Yes, the victim. When was the last time police were in contact with this woman? That's a very good question. So there... There have been multiple calls for service at this location in the last year. I, I, I can't tell you when the last time uh, the police actually made contact with her. I'd have to look. I'd have to look into that. Um, I can tell you for a fact that we did not make contact with her yesterday during the uh, arrest of the, the individual, um, the male who, who owns the residence. Um, and of course, we haven't made contact with her today. So I'm sorry. I can't be. Uh, you know, a little bit more. Uh, give you a little bit more information about that. To clarify, the complainant, that's the, the person that's... I'm sorry, yes, yeah. the female. From uh, back in April, that's yeah, same, that's same person. Yeah, a 30-year-old female. I, I really can't release her name right now until I follow up with the investigative division in our... our, uh, our uh... He said a 30-year-old female? Can't release her name right now? Okay, so at least they know who she is, and of course there would be records at the hospital, but they don't know where she is right now. Public information officer. Um, because, I, I, again, my, my main concern is, of course, I want to share information as freely as possible, but I also don't want to jeopardize anybody's safety. We're talking about the same person. Here, yes, right? I'm sorry. I shouldn't have used the term complainant. The female who was in the original report who was being held captive inside that room, allegedly. And do we believe that she was the only one in there, or are you looking for other potential We people? believe at this time that she was the only individual in that room. I, you know, I don't know how many. This is This is the first time I've been at this location, so I'd hate to think there were any others that were in that um, that circumstance as well, but it's something we'll definitely follow up on. The paperwork says four to five years. So they've got to be obviously careful with how they say they're not like, oh yeah, we think there's so many more victims. I, I get it. They have to be like, well, we think that there's only one for now, but they're still investigating. It just sounds really suspicious, right? Okay. Years ago, she went missing, was pregnant, anything with that? You know, it sounds like you have a bit more information on her background than I do. I, I haven't had the opportunity to, to, to really dig as much as I'd like. So that's, that's something that, that will lead to the investigation as well. And I'm sorry. <clears throat> I think my last question, just seeing the accusations and then also looking inside the windows, seeing the, the deadbolts and the locks and the, the boards over the windows. I mean, what do you think about this? It's disturbing um, on a personal level. Um, I My heart goes out to the, the woman involved because she is a victim and I have not met her personally but anybody with the children or anybody with a family member who has struggled in their life 
has been preyed upon by by those who um, are out for their 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 own ends at the expense of others. Um, it makes me sick as a human being, and I can tell you, as a as a police department, we are here for the citizens of Houston. We're here for the community, and uh, you know we're here to make sure that this this individual and her family gets justice. One quick final question. Um, the contact that was made with the individual that owns this home, yes. was that the first contact that HPD had since the warrant was issued and this whole thing transpired back in April? That's a good question and I don't I don't want to answer because I, I don't know the answer to that. My assumption would be yes because the warrant was, it's my understanding the warrant was filed in April. That's when the initial report was completed. So had there been an active felony warrant and we had made contact with the individual, we, we would have made the arrest. So I can't give you a definitive yes, but that's my assumption. It's not like he was both bonded out and then picked them up again at the same thing. I, no, I don't believe so. Okay, so this, the, so this was the arrest. Yes, correct. Sir, so, sir we're actually live right now on Eyewitness oh, yes, News. Can you give us just a quick recap just on what happened here, why y'all are here? Yes, yes. So. Um, we received, uh, there was, there was um, some investigative reporting. I know you guys said there's an airport nearby. It's <laughs> just like amazing how the sound just drops right off with all these microphones around, right? Done. I received a phone call from my public information officer who stated that he had received some questions from the media about this residence and um, that, that there were uh, members of the media at the house uh, currently and they knocked on the door. I assume in an effort to make contact with anybody inside, and at that point they heard, it's my understanding, uh, a dog barking and the TV going, so they contacted our public information officer. So um, that initial information, of course, got the ball rolling on our end, and at that point um, I was notified and we uh, initiated a welfare check. And tell us what you found when y'all opened the door. When we opened the door of the, the apartment, we found a dog inside. Uh, feces on the ground and um, an empty room with the TV on. So the, again, the, uh, there was nobody inside the residence. Uh, the dog, thankfully, uh, was not harmed and uh, barked to, to the end of the animal in custody. And to be clear for our viewers, you were still looking for a potential victim who you haven't been right. able to get in touch with. If you could explain yes, that situation. Yes, that, that's, that's absolutely correct. <laughs> There's a train now too, everyone. Kerry, this is not an official press conference. This was just media standing outside the house, seeing what's going on with this local rapper. Like, why are the police, you know, someone must have alerted them that the police are at the house and they can, they're going to try and break in now or something, you know, to make forced entry into it to hopefully save someone, but they couldn't find the victim. It's not an official press conference at all. So don't take it as that, okay? Although, I think the sound is better than some of the press conferences that we have seen that are official. <laughs> right? So, yeah, now we've got planes, we've got trains, we've got everything. So, that is the reason that, that we actually went into the, to the residence in the manner that we did, um, is because we were concerned about the welfare of a potential victim who we were unable to contact. Um, we did attempt to make contact with the victim. It's my understanding that we had several phone numbers associated with that victim, but Unfortunately, um, we were not able to speak to her, and we had no other good points of contact. We tried to exhaust all of our possibilities before going into the house. And I know that inside that room, the, there were locks, there were deadbolts, that there were signs that somebody had been held there against the window, right? I wouldn't want to say that, that I noticed signs that anybody had been held there, held in that room against mm -hmm. their will other than the fact that yes, the, the, it appears the only point of entry and exit into that room was through a door that um, was secured by a deadbolt that could have been locked from the outside. But other than that, it didn't appear to me, and I haven't, again, um, uh, this is going to be a, a situation that we're gonna need to, to really follow up with the investigative division, so I don't wanna speak out of turn, but, but that, uh, just having the fact that, that somebody could be secured in that room um, by a deadbolt and not have the ability to leave, um, to me, is alarming. That would be a red flag, and obviously the neighbors' reports as well. Patty of Furniture, I will check it out sometime. I see it's over three hours long, so I'll 
see what, what can we learn from it you got some bullet points <laughs> i'll have to watch that on 1.5 or two times speed to see what's going on there right okay so this uh informal press briefing not an official press conference is almost done absolutely and thank you so much yes. for the update. thank you, thank you, you so much okay. Thank you. okay so that's actually it and so again this is from grizzy's hood news wait let me show you let me show you grizzy's hood news there we go. And actually, I'm going to subscribe now so you can see as well how to look how it goes shiny. So if you haven't done that on my channel, do it, okay? <laughs> I will link Grizzly's Hood News um, in my description box so you can go check the source out of this video. And you click it again and you say, oh, that's what you got to do. Are you doing it? Have you done it here? <laughs> do it. That's how you do it. I like how it just like lights up now, right? And then, okay, now let's quickly look at this. Damn, this is, um, this is, we're almost done now with this because we don't have more details at the moment. Um, also, many people were asking about Timothy Hasler Jr. We don't have any more information on that at the moment. I'm still waiting to see, well, what, what's going to happen? Because he, phew, that one, the blue barrels and all of that stuff. If you've never heard of that case, I'm sure you could find it on my, it should be on my playlist. I've got an abductions playlist. It should be on there. Or you can just say Timothy Hasler Jr. Grizzly to Crime and you should find it, right? Okay, so rapper Viper Vivo Archive. I think this is a fan that runs this page, is what people said. And then there's these two videos um, that were recently posted and saying, I'm cutting all contact with Viper. One or two more videos will come out. So there's this one and this one. This is sort of doing a bit of a parody of what Viper does. So the person's obviously quite uh, pissed off with him right now of the allegations. Um, there are, there's a, He's got a big fan club as well, this rapper Viper dude. So you might see some of them in chat as well when, you know, they, they say free Viper. They're very upset that he'd been arrested and saying he did nothing. The thing is they have to investigate and they obviously have something to be able to investigate him, especially after being there eight times already. I don't know who called those eight times or what that was all about, but taking the victim sometimes to the hospital and then she ends up back there. It's just, it all sounds very scary, right? So... <laughs> I'll, I'll link this if you want to check it out interesting interesting stuff <laughs> so here okay then i just mean like some of it just it doesn't it doesn't make all that much sense you know and i listen to hip-hop and rap and stuff all the time but this is just i don't know some of it i think you have to be in a certain state <laughs> to really get it you know what i mean like oh man okay so i'm gonna link this if you want to see it this is the rapper they're talking about that was arrested okay i think I think I've shown you everything that I can show you right now. So let's uh, let's see what else, what other information comes out. Let's see if there ever will be a, you know, a formal press conference. This is in Houston, Texas. It's a local rapper that was arrested and he's facing very serious charges. I wonder if he'll, I think he will bail out, honestly. And let's hope he doesn't, it doesn't become a manhunt then. You never know. You never know. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I'll keep an eye on it. I'll keep you posted. Keep me posted as well, too, please. If you see something or if you find the probable cause affidavit or I don't know, you see anything, let me know. He's going to be in court on Monday, actually, on the 8th. Today's the 6th, right? Yeah, today's Saturday, the 6th of January. He's going to be in court on Monday. So let's see what happens from then. If there's any news, I'll share it with you. If it's not something enough to go live with then check out my youtube shorts or my community tab because that's generally where i would update you if it's just like a quick update okay so that's it for now now members we're gonna have a members only stream now let's snark and chat and do all the things we like to do and then i will see you all very soon again i <laughs> know i said yesterday today i'm probably gonna rest well i did and here i am <laughs> so thank you so much for hearing this case out with me i think i'm as confused as you about wow uh, where are the children were they born what happened to them and where's the victim i mean is she okay and are there more victims i hope that if anyone sees this that's what i said at the beginning right if they see this and they have information on this guy that they will call the police and help the investigation out because the more information the better for the case uh, that they are building, I suppose, against him, right? To know, well, what did he do? And so that if he has, because it's all alleged, he's innocent or proven guilty, if he has hurt anyone, 
um, you know, victimized anyone, kept anyone against their will, or has been involved in what the neighbors have been speculating, well, then he's going to have to not only be held accountable, but also be put behind bars so he doesn't do it again, doesn't hurt any more people, right? Okay, so thank you so much for spending some of your Saturday with me. You are going to teleport now. I will put the link in chat as well in the outro. So don't worry if you don't, just click on it if you want to go there <laughs> and not wait for teleport. If you want to wait to teleport, which someone laughed at us saying teleport the other day. They're like, teleport? Yes, we do grizzly teleport, okay? <laughs> We're going to be redirected to the next uh, stream, which will be a members-only stream. And I'll see you all maybe tomorrow, maybe Monday. I'll see you very soon. Okay, bye.